Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's Change of Command ceremony. Today, Major General Stephen R. Lanza will change command of the 7th Infantry Division with Major General Terry R. Farrell. On the tarmac before you are the participating units in today's ceremony. Composed of the division staff, brigade commanders and command sergeants major, battalion and squadron commanders and command sergeants major, and all unit colors assigned to 7th ID. We would also like to extend a special welcome to General Allen, Mrs. Shali Kashvili, Mayor Anderson, Mayor Ryder, Lieutenant General Retired Harrison, Lieutenant General Retired and Mrs. Stone, Sergeant First Class Petrie, Staff Sergeant and Mrs. Carter, Rear Admiral, Admiral Gromlich, Major General Fuller, Major General Dahl and Lieutenant Colonel Floor Cruz, Major General Doherty, Mrs. Cole, Major General Retired Farmer, Major General Retired and Mrs. Collins, Major General Retired and Mrs. Brown, Major General Retired Trobaugh, Major General Retired and Mrs. Hemphill, Major General Retired Taylor, Command Sergeant Major Retired Schmelling, Mr. Freed, Brigadier General Cho, Brigadier General Tureen and Mrs. Tureen, Brigadier General Turner, Brigadier General and Mrs. Gaylor, Mrs. Ryan, Brigadier General Retired and Mrs. Hillman, Brigadier General Retired and Mrs. Rausch, Colonel Promotable and Mrs. Burleson, and Colonel Kumashiro. And welcome to all other commanders and command sergeants major, distinguished guests, family, friends, and soldiers. The host for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Robert Brown, First Corps Commanding General. The commander of troops is Lieutenant Colonel Joseph E. Hilbert, the Division Deputy Chief of Staff. The Division Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Samuel G. Murphy. The salute battery is from the 17th Fires Brigade and is under the direction of First Lieutenant John Adair. Please direct your attention to the VIP seating se section. At this time, Madeline Lanza is being presented a bouquet of red roses as a token of appreciation from the soldiers and families of the 7th Infantry Division for her unwavering support of the Bayonet Division over the past year and a half. The flowers are being presented by Sergeant Sean Colston. Thank you, Madeline. At this time, Robbie Farrell is being presented a bouquet of yellow roses as a welcome to the Bayonet family. The flowers are being presented by Specialist Patrick Ryan. Welcome to the team, Robbie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by the 7th Infantry Division Chaplain, Chaplain Paul Jedicke. Almighty God, thank you for the leadership of Major General Lanza. Thank you for the direction and guidance he provided the soldiers of the Bayonet Division. Thank you for the partnership of Madeline and the support of Command Sergeant Major Murphy. Please give the new commander, Major General Farrell, wisdom to make sound decisions. Empower General Farrell to lead the 7th Infantry Division with integrity of heart and skillfulness of hand. Strengthen him and Robbie during this season of great responsibility. In the Lord's name I pray, amen. Please be seated. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. Providing music for today's ceremony is the First Corps Army Band, the heartbeat of America's Corps. The band is commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 4, Jeffrey Larson, and Sergeant Major Adam Heffelfinger. The drum major is Staff Sergeant Terrell Henkel. Standing at his post is the adjutant for today's ceremony, the Division G1, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Agin. Upon his command, the bugler will sound attention and adjutant's call. The adjutant's call has opened military ceremonies for over 150 years.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and direct your attention to the reviewing stand for the arrival of the official party and playing of honors. General Brown has deferred honors to General Farrell for today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the national anthem. seated. The change of command ceremony is a simple traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the change of command is the passing of the unit colors. These colors represent not only the heritage and the history of the unit, but also the unity and loyalty of its soldiers. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major. As the senior enlisted soldier in the division, Command Sergeant Major Murphy is the spokesperson for the loyalty and concerns of the soldiers and a principal advisor 
to the commander. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5 alpha, the undersigned assumes command of the 7th Infantry Division, effective 4 February 2014, signed Terry R. Farrell, Major General, U.S. Army, commanding. The Division Command Sergeant Major passes the colors to the outgoing commander, Major General Lanza, for the last time. Major General Lanza passes the colors to the First Corps Commander, Lieutenant General Brown, relinquishing his responsibility and authority of the Bayonet Division. Lieutenant General Brown passes the colors and all they represent to the new Division Commanding General, Major General Farrell, who now assumes command of the Bayonet Division. Major General Farrell returns the colors to the Division Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Murphy, charging him with maintaining his symbol of command. Command Sergeant Major Murphy returns the colors to the color bearer, the enlisted soldier who exemplifies the highest standards of discipline, conduct, and military expertise that merit the responsibility of bearing the colors that represent so much to fellow soldiers. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of First Corps, Lieutenant General Robert Brown. Well, thank you for joining us today for this special ceremony. I think we made the right call with the snowflakes outside. Would have been a little rough in the crowd. It's still a little cold in here, uh, but uh, much better than being out there. So we never thank the weathermen. You know, we always blame them. So we're going to have to give some credit here uh, for, for a great call. I really want to welcome our many distinguished guests. We went through and read uh, uh, the community leaders who are here. We're grateful for your presence. The retired general officers, thank you so much for attending. Uh, you, all, you all mean so much to this community and do so much for us. Retired Command Sergeants Major. A uh, special guest was mentioned, uh, General Dan Allen. Sir, thank you for being here. Uh, this historic event, we truly appreciate your presence. The Force Command, Forces Command uh, Commanding General makes it very special. I really uh, want to recognize the uh, family uh, of both of these uh, great soldiers and, and leaders. And first, let's look at Team Lanza. Uh, Madeline, uh, we recognized earlier. Thanks so much for all your support, Madeline. And, and uh, this means so much. Uh, married over the last 17 years to Steve. Now, Raymond, I understand. Uh, Raymond was going to be here, but uh, had a test in school. And that's a, pretty, that's a pretty tough mom. Wouldn't let him out of the test. Uh, so that, that's a good, I'm, I'm sure Raymond would have rather played hooky, knowing Raymond. But uh, Raymond's 12 years old and a great young man, uh, loves baseball right now, uh, playing about three or four basketball teams, uh, doing a great job. And, and so we're, we're glad uh, he'll be here Thursday, though he gets, he gets to play hooky Thursday. And then uh, Steve's brother, Robert, and, and uh, sister-in-law, Terry Lanza, are here from uh, Maryland. Uh, Robert, from what I understand, younger brother, but you got all the brains, uh, being the uh, chemical engineer. Steve didn't debate that at all. He, he admitted it readily. He claims he got the looks, but I, I'm not sure about that. But thanks so much coming all the way from Maryland. Makes such a huge difference, makes us really special. Really appreciate you traveling that far, and, uh, friends and family. Now for uh, Team Farrell, uh, we heard uh, Robbie uh, uh, received uh, her, her welcome, but really a neat story. Uh, Robbie, uh, 26 years of service, uh, retired a colonel, commanded the 24th uh, CSG, and uh, they, they met after uh, Robbie was serving, I guess you said, about 18 years and got married after 20 years of service, so uh, pretty incredible, and thanks for coming. Their son, Logan, couldn't be here. He's at William and Mary, uh, and, uh, but the neat thing is uh, Logan just recently decided to sign up for ROTC in his uh, junior year there, and so we may have another, uh, we'll have another Army officer. Pretty, pretty neat. Uh, congratulations to Logan. So again, thank you for joining us it's, as we celebrate this milestone uh, in the history of this great division and the careers of two great American soldiers as they pass the baton of leadership of the 7th Infantry Division. You know, it's hard to believe it's only been 15 months since we reactivated 7th ID, uh, the Bayonet Division. Today, with over 20,000 soldiers in the division, seven brigades, 7th ID is the largest division in the Army. And Major General Steve Lanza was the absolute right man to lead the division as it stood up 
Uh, his team has accomplished more in the past year uh, than most do in a decade. Building the division from scratch, Steve poured his heart and soul into doing things right, which started by assembling a championship team around him. And you see those folks standing here and seated behind the members of the team, just incredible team that was formed. The impact of 7th Infantry Division headquarters uh, was felt almost immediately. Giving the subordinate brigade command teams a general officer level headquarters between them and the Corps provided a critical layer that previously did not exist. Now, this oversight, coupled with the right leadership, has led to significantly better leader development, better training, increased resiliency for soldiers, decreased incidents, and increased care for the needs of our soldiers and their families, and no doubt about it. 7th Infantry Division has had a huge impact in rebalance to the Pacific, leading the way on numerous Pacific exercises and ensuring 1st Corps was unencumbered to participate in exercise in the Pacific as well. They have excelled at tough, demanding, realistic training at home station and at the National Training Center. But most importantly, uh, they provided brigades prepared for the fight in Afghanistan and supported them exceptionally well throughout their deployments as they carried out our nation's most important mission. And these types of achievements and this overall success uh, of this division, it doesn't happen by chance. They happen because of energetic, motivated, dedicated, and inspired leaders who demand excellence in themselves and those around them. And Steve is that type of leader. Steve, you should be awful proud of everything this division has accomplished. I know we're all extremely proud. Thank you for your commitment to these soldiers, these families of the 7th Infantry Division, and I'm very proud to call you a friend and honored to pass the First Corps guide on to you in just a few days. And no commander can be successful uh, without the support of his or her spouse. And Madeline has been an amazing source of support for Steve and the families of 7th Infantry Division. She's a true port portrait of selfless service, no doubt about that serving as a Family Readiness Group Senior Advisor, volunteering her time to organizations like uh, JBLM Santa's Castle, uh, the Spouses Community Club, and in a community at St. Francis Cabrini School where Raymond's going to school and uh, was unable to play hooky today. So, but uh, Madeline, we thank you for your incredible support, your boundless energy, creating a, a true family, and all you've done for the soldiers, the families, uh, across the board. So thanks very much, Madeline. Really appreciate it. And as we say thank you to Steve and Madeline for their leadership at the helm of 7th ID, today we also welcome the new command team, uh, Terry Farrell and again his wife, Robbie. And Terry's a 29-year proven combat leader who's coming from, uh, just arrived, in fact, 48 hours ago from Djibouti, uh, where he was commander of Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa tough, tough mission, and he excelled. He's deployed numerous times, and four or five times to Iraq alone, to Bosnia as well. Uh, he's a proven combat leader, no doubt about it. He encourages leaders to take the initiative, and he builds incredible teams. And Terry's background is just perfect uh, for this division, as he commanded the National Training Center with distinction, and he knows just how important it is for us to offer the very best training so to our soldiers so they can excel and achieve in any mission called upon in this complex operating environment. As the new commander of 7th ID, Terry will continue to usher in uh, this new chapter in Division's rich history. Now, just in case you hadn't noticed, not to mention, I know Sergeant Major Norman and many of us are also glad we needed a few more tanker boots walking around JBLM. And there they are right there, and that's a great addition. So thanks again to the outgoing leadership team, Steve and Madeline, for their hard work, dedication, commitment to our great soldiers. And gee, Steve, you got a whole day off. What are you going to do with that whole day off before you take First Corps? Enjoy it, relax a little bit. Uh, and then welcome to the new team, Terry and Robbie and their son, Logan. I'm certain you will continue to move this great division forward, continuing to set a standard of excellence, no doubt about it. Bayonet, America's Corps, courage. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander of the Bayonet Division, Major General Stephen R. Lanza.
Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for coming to this occasion today. And uh, I'd like to recognize General Allen, Lieutenant General and Mrs. Brown, Major General Jimmy Collins, our civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army. Also, Medal of Honor recipients today, Sergeant First Class Leroy Petrie, Staff Sergeant Ty Carter, as well as fellow general officers, Command Sergeant Majors, community leaders of the South Sound, family and friends of the Bayonet Division, my classmates that are a little skeptical today. Thank you for joining us for this. <laughs> thank you for joining us for this special occasion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you look to your front today, you see what makes your army the best army on the face of the earth. Professional, disciplined, trained, and ready soldiers. And these fine young men and women exemplify the warrior ethos. They're tough, they're dedicated, they're hardworking, and they're confident. And today they represent this historic division's past, its present, and its future. And today's ceremony is really about them. It's about them, the American soldier. And these volunteers today, they carry our torch of freedom for our nation, just as generations before them have done. And Sergeant Murphy, to you, the salute battery, to the band, to the color guard, the division as always looks incredible. And Sergeant Major, I just want to take a moment to say you are the best Sergeant Major a commander could ask for, and absolutely perfect to be the senior non-commissioned officer in the Bayonet Division. Thank you for your leadership, and thank you for your friendship. And ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to join me in a round of applause for these great, phenomenal soldiers to your front today. As I relinquish command uh, to great Team Farrell today, I'm filled with an overwhelming sense of gratitude, and I owe thanks to many people. And although I cannot thank everyone today, I would like to recognize a few. Uh, General Allen, General Brown, gentlemen, thank you. I'm extremely grateful to have the opportunity to command one of your teams. And thank you for the trust and confidence you have given me and placed in me to command and lead such a superb outfit. And General Brown, to you and Patty especially, thank you for your incredible support of the division we appreciate your friendship and value it very much. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Sholley, General Harrison, General Collins, General Hemphill, General Richardson, Mayors Anderson and Lucas, as well as Carlene Joseph, and all the community leaders that are here today from the South Sound community, you have been extremely caring of our soldiers and family members of the Bayonet Division. We appreciate all you have done to accept us into this wonderful community. And I must say, in over 30 years of service, I've lived in many military communities but none can compare to the support and friendship of the South Sound and everything you have shown us with your friendship. And for a soldier, this is truly the best place to live. Thank you very much. And as we all know today, the strength of our soldiers is our families. And while the duties of your soldier often require him or her to miss birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays, please know that these soldiers serve for you. And we all cherish and flourish with the love and support that our families so selflessly provide us. And today, as always, our thoughts and prayers are with our Gold Star family members that are here. And while all soldiers and service members give, a brave few give their all, and we keep them in our hearts, and we work every day to honor their memory. We must always hold survivors of these soldiers close and support them in every way. It is the service and sacrifice of our families that is vital to our success. And I especially want to take a moment to thank the spouses for all you do and the sacrifices you make. And ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to join me in one more round of applause for our great Army families here today. I'd like to take a moment to thank my own family that is here today, my great brother Robert and his wife Terry. Thank you for making the long trek from Maryland to be here. And for my lovely wife Madeline, I've adored you since day one, and I relish every moment we spend together. I could not have found a better partner, friend, and teammate Honey, I love you. Both you and Raymond provide me with unbound joy. Thank you for all you do. From day one, this division has been about the team. You've heard that today, and you'll continue to hear that. We set forth to build a ready and resilient combined arms team of teams, focused on mission, soldier, and family readiness. We're proud of the support we were able to provide General Brown and the Corps to help them focus on the Pacific and execute mission command. And just as important, leaders of this division have built leader development programs, resiliency systems, and training initiatives that are second to none. And today, that's what this is all about, to ensure our soldiers are lethal, agile, and capable of being globally responsive and an expeditionary force in support of the Army's strategic goals. And to do so requires adaptive leaders. It is and always 
will begin and end with leadership at every level. And it is your leadership that will enable our Army to deploy and fight and win under any condition. And I'm proud to say, ladies and gentlemen, that today you see in front of you the type of leaders that we have throughout the ranks of this division. From the superb leaders in our command group on down, the leadership of our Lancers, Arrowhead, Raiders, Raptors, Thunderbolt, Griffins, and Winning Able is first class. It is an honor to have served with so many exceptional command teams. These commanders and sergeant majors understand the purpose of command. They are the professional leaders our Army needs, but more importantly, the ones our soldiers deserve. Thank you for your dedication to our soldiers and to this profession. Uh, to the officers and NCOs in, your, in front today, thank you for the role model you serve for soldiers to emulate. And I'd ask you to cherish the experience you had to lead, sustain the bonds of trust, and remember that leading soldiers is an honor with no equal. And as you know today, when it is time to follow the call of duty to a new post, we are honored and grateful to be able to pass the torch to others who will hold it high. And today I'm extremely honored to pass over the reins to a tremendous leader, a great friend, and a wonderful Army family. Major General Terry Farrell is a proven combat leader and the caliber of officer that will lead the division to greater heights and accomplishments. The Farrells are an incredible team, and I know all of you today will soon endear yourselves to them. Our soldiers, families, and members of the community are very lucky indeed that Team Farrell is on board. Terry, Robbie, welcome to Joint Base Lewis McCord. You will find, as Madeline and I have, that this is a very special place. We are fortunate to have you on the team and look forward to working with you and Robbie in the future. Thank you for all you have done and will do for our soldiers and families. You are truly the right leaders to continue to build this team and maintain the trust with those we serve. And as I close today, Madeline and I are humbled by the extraordinary opportunity and time we have had with all of you. There is nothing more important and gratifying to us to be able to serve our soldiers and their families. We are indeed honored and appreciative that we are allowed to continue to serve and particularly to continue to do so in this wonderful community as members of this tremendous team of teams. Thank you all for this day. May God bless you and your families. Bayonet, courage. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the Bayonet Division, Major General Terry R. Farrell. And good afternoon. All right, I was clapping when I walked up here. A lot of people think that's for me. It's really not. It's for me to figure out what I'm going to say. And I think I've got it figured out first and foremost to all of the distinguished leaders. There's so many here. Thank you for taking time out of a very busy schedule to come out today and be a part of a very, very special ceremony. One that honors an outgoing command team that has done phenomenal things for this division. And Major General Lanza and Madeline, thank you first and foremost for your warm reception of Robbie and I. We truly appreciate that as you bring us in and make us a part of this community and a part of this team and setting us up for success with this wonderful division. Thank you both, and we do look forward to working with you and going forward. And for just one or two others, there's so many in the list that I could go on for days, but you've already heard the list multiple times. I do want to highlight General Brown. Thank you, sir, for your guidance and your willingness to bring me into this organization. And the boots, they're OK. They are OK, really. Ask your Sergeant Major. It's all right. Uh, we won't change everything because of the boots. But, sir, thank you for your trust and confidence, and I appreciate that. And then finally, as General Allen looks at the floor and laughs, you've experienced the boots many years, sir. And I do appreciate having you here today. And more importantly, I appreciate your trust and confidence as I assume this command today and as Robbie and I will move forward in this division. First and foremost, thank you for being here and your trust in us and your mentorship throughout the years, sir. Thank you. It's truly phenomenal to be here. We're excited beyond words. I could go on for days, but I'll, I'll just want to highlight that I think there was an omen somewhere in the past or a sign on a wall, and I'll give you just a snapshot. I was at DCG setting at Camp Casey just a few years ago, and a little hooch across from the, the DCG Elm in 2ID's headquarters. My wife and I was actually sitting in this little two-room facility that we lived in at Camp Casey, and there was a large Indian head patch over the fireplace, a wooden patch. 
We're sitting there one night watching television, and the wooden patch fell. Literally, it just fell off the fireplace. What do you think was behind the wooden patch? Built into the fireplace, in the brick, with appropriate colors, was the seventh ID patch. So I think they were trying to tell me something then, or they should have told me, hey, you should be striving for this, but it may be in your future. I'm not sure, but it sure was an indicator now that I think about it as we drove from Georgia to here after landing from Djibouti. Again, this is a phenomenal division. You've done great things as you've stood and got the division headquarters on board to work with these brigades and the Corps. We want to be a part of the team and move forward as a team of teams. And, sir, we look forward to working with you and Madeline at the Corps. And, sir, we look forward to working with Forces Command and all forces from a global perspective. Again, it's great to be here. Robbie and I are truly excited. We will get out and meet all of you. Please come see us as well. And, again, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's very humbling. Trust in me. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the retirement of the colors and remain standing for the singing of the bayonet march and the army song. The words can be found on the last two pages of your program.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Major General Lanza and his family will remain at the reviewing stand for well-wishers. Thank you for attending this momentous occasion. Bayonet. <laughs>